So there's some huge AI news coming out this week, including a surprise move by Microsoft. But before we get into any of that, this lady is upset. Subscribe for more sweet AI content. Scarlett Johansson says OpenAI tried to ink a voice deal, but was rebuffed, then mimicked voice anyway. So Sam Altman and team all have referred to the new AI voice as her. It was kind of this meme talking about the movie Her, a story of a man that falls in love with an AI assistant, voiced by Scarlett Johansson. And when OpenAI released their new model, a number of viewers noticed that one of them, one of the voices, Sky, sounded suspiciously like the actress who portrayed the voice of an emotive AI in the 2013 film, Her. In fact, here's Sam Altman saying, Her, referring to the new AI voice assistant. The tweet gets 15.3 million views. People are very impressed, but unfortunately, not everyone is happy with this. Here's a statement from Scarlett Johansson, apparently, so I haven't had any 100% proof that this is by her, but certainly this fits in with all the news surrounding the story. She's saying, last September, I received an offer from Sam Altman, who wanted to hire me to voice the current ChatGPT 4.0 system. He told me that he felt that by voicing the system, I could bridge the gap between tech companies and creatives and help consumers to feel comfortable with the seismic shift concerning humans and AI. He said he felt that my voice would be comforting to people. After much consideration, and for personal reasons, I declined the offer. Nine months later, my friends, family, and the general public all noted how much the newest system named Sky sounded like me. When I heard the release demo, I was shocked, angered, and in disbelief that Mr. Altman would pursue a voice that sounded so eerily similar to mine that my closest friends and news outlets could not tell the difference. Mr. Altman even insinuated that the similarity was intentional, tweeting a single word, her, a reference to the film in which I voiced a chat system, Samantha, who forms an intimate relationship with a human. Two days before the ChatGPT 4.0 demo was released, Mr. Altman contacted my agent asking me to reconsider. Before we could connect, the system was out there. As a result of their actions, I was forced to hire legal counsel who wrote two letters to Mr. Altman and OpenAI, setting out what they had done and asking them to detail the exact process by which they created the Sky Voice. Consequently, OpenAI reluctantly agreed to take down the Sky Voice. In a time when we are all grappling with deepfakes and the protection of our own likeness, our own work, our own identities, I believe these are questions that deserve absolute clarity. I look forward to resolution in the form of transparency, and the passage of appropriate legislation to help ensure that individual rights are protected. Which, that is interesting. That kind of got a bit different towards the end there, didn't it? It went from, I am personally upset to outlaw this right now, right? But, I mean, I get where she's coming from. Obviously, that's how actors and celebrities and artists, that's how they make their money. So, of course, Hollywood and a lot of other people in that space, they will want to see some sort of legislation about this. But... My question is, do they sound the same? And I'm not going to say one way or another. Let me just play you the clips of the actress talking as she does normally. It was Patrick Swayze and David Bowie in Labyrinth when I was like, oh. Her voice in the movie Her. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> I'm well. How's everything with you? Pretty good, actually. It's really nice to meet you. And the opening eyes voice, codename Sky. I like to think I have my own unique strengths. I can understand and generate human-like text pretty well. It really depends on what you're looking for in an assistant. Tell me, are they the same voice? Do you think they're identical, similar? How would you describe them? What's funny is long before this drama started, here's Andre Karpathy, uh, ex OpenAI, with a quip saying, the killer app of LLMs is Scarlett Johansson. Y'all thought it was math or something. Plimi, the prompter, the notorious jailbreaker of various LLM systems, figures out how to make the Sky voice say whatever he wants. I'm not going to play any of them. Even for this channel, it's a little bit shocking. One of them is a Drake diss track, apparently. Now, OpenAI did respond to discuss how the voices for ChatGPT were chosen. They're saying we worked with industry leading casting and directing professionals to narrow down over 400 submissions before selecting the five voices. They're saying that each of the voices, Breeze, Cove, Amber, Juniper, and Sky, are sampled from the voice actors we partnered with to create them. We support the creative community and collaborated with the voice acting industry. 
They're saying, we worked closely with the voice acting industry to ensure we took the right steps to cast ChatGPT's voices. Each actor receives compensation above top of market rates, and this will continue for as long as their voices are used in our products. We believe that AI voices should not deliberately mimic a celebrity's distinctive voice. Sky's voice is not an imitation of Scarlett Johansson's, but belonging to a different professional actress using her own natural speaking voice. To protect their privacy, we cannot share the names of our voice talents. They received 400 submissions from voice and screen actors. To addition, the actors were given a script of ChatGPT responses and were asked to record them. These samples ranged from answering questions about mindfulness to brainstorming travel plans and even engaging in conversations about a user's day. They selected the five voices they liked, and those became the five voices that we hear on ChatGPT. Each actor flew to San Francisco for recording sessions, and their voices were launched into ChatGPT in September 2023. Now, I doubt that they're just making stuff up here. I would really be surprised if the company with the scale of OpenAI, with that much visibility, knowing that there's a potential lawsuit brewing, would just make stuff up. It sounds like yes, indeed, because this would be very easy to verify. Was there a person that flew to San Francisco that auditioned for The Voice, that recorded the various prompts that they talked about that later became Sky? I don't know about you, I would feel comfortable betting a lot of money that this is in fact the case. I would be shocked, quite honestly, if this was just all made up to try to avoid a lawsuit. I, I very much doubt that that's what happened. This is something that's very interesting to me because different people see the situation very differently. Here's Andrew Gao saying he feels bad for the voice actress who got her big break as a voice for ChatGPT, but then got it taken away because her voice sounds too similar to Scarlett Johansson. Here's Tempo 511 Casey saying this is not what happened. OpenAI literally asked Johansson. She turned it down. They went ahead anyways, clearly trying to emulate her. How do we know this? Because they asked a second time before releasing GPT-4.0. Deeply deceitful behavior from OpenAI. Now, I'd be curious to know what you think. Now, let's assume both of these things are true. That there's this voice actress that got her big break, created the voice for Sky, flew to San Francisco, recorded everything, did everything right, got her big break, and is now being paid very well, it seems like they said above market rate, for the work that she did by using her natural speaking voice. And let's also assume that what has happened with Sam Altman and OpenAI asking Scarlett Johansson to use her voice, that, that also happened. They did reach out to her initially. It sounds like that was before, you know, September 2023. And they asked her, hey, could you be the voice for this? She declined and they got another actress. Is that okay? Is that being deceitful? Are they no longer allowed to use that voice because it has some similarities to the bigger actress's voice, right? Because obviously the voice actress, like we don't even know her name. She is, some might say like a nobody in this world of celebrity status. Scarlett Johansson is A-list celebrity, right? So kind of a huge power difference there, right? In terms of celebrity status, name recognition, I'm sure money as well, right? To me, I can't help but feel that this smaller actress, this voice actress is kind of getting screwed over. And yeah, maybe OpenAI did whatever they felt they needed to do to get that voice. Maybe they didn't respect Scarlett Johansson wishes, but they didn't go with her voice. They used this other person. I guess it really depends if you think that the voices sound similar or not. A lot of people are suing a OpenAI and other AI companies, Meta, for example, because they're saying that this AI reproduces their books or their voices or their images or whatever. And we've had lawsuits like this happen before. Lindsay Lohan tried to sue Rockstar Games for a character that looked like her, right? So GTA V had this character on the right. And I guess they were claiming that they based it on Lindsay Lohan. But that lawsuit looks like it was thrown out. They were saying that the in-game character merely resembled a generic young woman. So I guess it comes down to whether you think that Sky's voice could be considered a generic voice or that that voice, that kind of range of vocals and intonations cannot be used because of a high status celebrity that, that kind of branded that voice. So I'm not sure. I mean, I'll come out and say it. I might be a little bit biased on this. I think it's kind of nonsense, both in the GTA 5 lawsuit and here, because again, I mean, at least in the GTA lawsuit, 
I think that made sense in a sense that they could have copied her likeness. Whereas here, it's an actual other person that's voicing it. But that's just my opinion. I'm not here to convince you otherwise. In other news, Microsoft releases some pretty cool features and potentially some concerning features. First and foremost, take a look at this AI co-pilot running on device, helping you play Minecraft real time. Hey, co-pilot, how's it going? Hey, I'm doing great. And it looks like you're about to dive into some Minecraft, ready to build, explore, and maybe dodge a few mobs. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to make a sword. My son plays this game all the time and I have no idea what I'm doing. No worries. I'm here to help you impress your son. I see you've got a crafting table in front of you, which is a great start. To craft a sword, you'll need some materials. Can you open your inventory? Just press E on your keyboard. Yeah, uh, do I have what I need? Let's see. You've got some sticks, perfect for the sword's handle, but it looks like you're missing the material for the blade. You can use wood, stone, iron, gold, or diamond. Let's start by gathering some wood or stone. Shall we head out and find some resources? Yeah, that sounds great. Oh my god, what's that? Oh no, it's a zombie! Run! You need to get away from it fast. Either sprint away or quickly build a tower of blocks straight up to get out of its reach. If you can find a shelter or dig into the side of a hill, do it now. Just make sure it can't reach you. All right, I think I might be safe now. Cool. That was a close one. Great job finding shelter. So that's pretty cool. So this is the case that they mentioned on the information.com where your Windows PC can observe what you're doing on your computer, then coach you verbally in real time if you need help. And they're saying this shouldn't be mocked though. Our devices and their software have gotten so complex that many of us are already talking to our computers in frustration with expletives and outdoor voices. That is truer than I'd like to admit. Having an AI version of Clippy, well, whatever we do, let's not bring Clippy back. But having some sort of an AI embodiment of an assistant that can actually do its job well should win Microsoft a Nobel Prize for user friendliness, if such an award existed. Now, of course, if you think about what that AI assistant is doing is it's looking at your screen. And that, of course, goes hand in hand with this new feature called Recall or Recall on Copilot Plus PC. Basically, what it does is whatever you're doing on your computer, whatever you're looking at, naughty or nice, the computer is watching, recording, memorizing, and is able to search for it on demand. So if you looked at some email last week and you vaguely recall the information, you can ask it to find it and it's able to access those clips and answer questions based on what you were looking at. So as they say, this helps you remember things that you may have forgotten so you can find what you're looking for quickly and intuitively by simply using the cues you remember. And this brings us to the next big thing that they're talking about, the neural processing units or NPUs. So we have the GPUs, for example, NVIDIA, graphical processing units. Over at Google, we have the Tensor version of that, the TPU's Tensor processing unit. And of course, lately, we've also heard about Grok with a Q and their chip which they refer to as a language processing unit, LPU. So here's another acronym to remember. This is Neural Processing Units, NPUs. Here's Tom's hardware with a great image here. So CPU, Central Processing Unit, NPU. This is the neural one that Microsoft is talking about, GPU, Graphical Processing Unit. And as Microsoft themselves describe it, here's how the NPU is different from a CPU or a GPU. The NPU is a dedicated AI chip designed specifically to perform AI tasks. The focus of the NPU differs from that of a CPU or GPU. The CPU is, of course, the primary processor in the computer, the main kind of general purpose chip that executes the various instructions, the general purpose workhorse of the computer. Then we have the GPU. So again, NVIDIA is the one that's kind of dominating that game right now. It was a specialized processor designed for rendering graphics and optimized for parallel processing. So instead of doing one task at a time in sequence, it's able to run multiple processes at the same time. And it started out, of course, for video editing, gaming tasks, etc. And of course, Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA, was very fortunate in that, of course, we had the crypto boom, which the GPUs did very well in, and now the AI boom, which again is really good for NVIDIA, making his company one of the most valuable in the world. And NPUs are designed to accelerate deep learning algorithms and can remove some of the work from a computer's CPU or GPU so that the device can 
work more efficiently. And we've seen a number of approaches to doing this, right? Because of course the AI is basically neural networks, neural nets. So a number of different people have various ideas for how to make chips that are more customized, more efficient for running neural network tasks. And it sounds like Microsoft is doubling down on the NPUs. And it sounds like it's going to be running alongside the CPU and the GPU. So you might have a GPU in there, an NVIDIA card alongside your CPU. And on top of that, or beside it, an NPU for specific AI tasks. So today was just an appetizer for Microsoft. Tomorrow is when we're actually getting the big announcements, the big news. We'll have a full coverage for you then. With all that, my name is Wes Roth, and thank you for watching.